Anti-abortion union-busting Republican John Kasich is an honored speaker at the Democratic National Convention, one who got more speaking time than actual Democrat Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who's relegated to a 60-second pre-recorded speech. Literal Republican Kasich feels emboldened to lecture AOC in the press. I think both parties have to have new ideas, and I think this country is moderate. People on the extreme, whether they're on the left or on the right, they get outsized publicity that tends to define their party. You know, I listen to people all the time make these statements, and because AOC gets outsized publicity, doesn't mean she represents the Democratic Party. She's just a part, just some member of it. That's interesting, John, because Medicare for All, the Green New Deal, the policy proposals that AOC is most known for, they're supported by an overwhelming majority of Americans. So issue by issue, the country is not moderate. But obviously that was extremely arrogant to put that out there and lecture her on the Democratic Party and AOC clapped back. It's great that Kasich has woken up and realized the importance of supporting a Biden-Harris ticket. I hope he gets through the GOP voters. Yet also, something tells me a Republican who fights against women's rights doesn't get to say who is or isn't representative of the Democratic Party. We can build bridges and not lose sight of our values. It's important to remember that Kasich is an anti-choice extremist. He 100% will and has signed away our reproductive rights the moment he has the opportunity to do so. He is not a friend to workers. Per usual, she's right. And I love that she didn't cower to the Democratic establishment and national leadership and try to play nice with Kasich there as he tried to condescend her about the Democratic Party in the press. Yes, he's a right-to-work Republican. And yes, he's an anti-abortion, anti-choice extremist, as she put it, and signed in 2018 some of the most horrific legislation when it comes to restricting a woman's choice and the relationship between a patient and her doctor. This article's from 2018. Ohio Governor John Kasich just signed one of the most restrictive abortion bans in the country. On Friday, Kasich signed Senate Bill 145, which would ban a common second trimester abortion procedure called dilation and evacuation and penalize doctors who perform them. Physicians could face a fourth degree felony punishable by up to 18 months in prison for the procedure. The proposal, which would ban most abortions as early as 12 weeks gestation, has no exception for rape or incest, but does allow for an abortion to save a woman's life. By banning dilation and evacuation procedures, Ohio joins two other states, Mississippi and West Virginia, that have halted those types of abortions. A handful of other states have passed laws to penalize the procedure, but federal courts have called them unconstitutional. But he has the gall to say what Democrats want and what the Democratic Party needs. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is quite popular within the Democratic Party. She's been able to reach more moderate Democrats in a way that Bernie Sanders couldn't, honestly because of her identity and her way of communication. And women who were told all the time that Bernie Sanders is some sort of sexist by the mainstream media, they're more open to Medicare for all because of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. They're more open to a Green New Deal. She put that onto the national stage because of her. So let alone the fact that those policy proposals are massively popular when you look at polling throughout the country, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has transcended and is an immensely powerful figure, way more than Kasich could ever dream of. But the idea that he has the arrogance to speak about this as a Republican who's invited to speak at the Democratic Convention because of the establishment's fetishization of these Republicans that have turned against Trump, which is a very small, slim margin. It's mystical almost in the way that it's portrayed. There's not a lot of them. Um, he then feels emboldened to speak on these matters. It's, it's gross, but it, the reason he feels emboldened is because the Democratic Party and its leadership in its current state feels more comfortable with moderate Republicans and just Republicans in general than progressives. Because when you can play this game of good cop, bad cop, where the cop that's good isn't even that good, it doesn't threaten the current order of things. All the consultants that still work at the, D the DNC, they'll still get paid. The Republicans, they can spar back and forth, but business as usual largely, and the establishment isn't threatened. But progressives, they call out Democrats for being like Republicans, and then the jig is up. Ugh, oh, why are you voting through this uh, provision that protects credit card companies? Why are you protecting the military industrial complex? And on and on. 
So they want to stifle them even more. And nothing has been more crystallizing of that phenomenon. Nothing is more indicative of it, representative, symbolic, than Kasich getting this prime spot and AOC being relegated to a 60 second basically infomercial that's pre-recorded so she can't call them out. But she called them out still on Twitter. And that was awesome. Kasich. <laughs> you talk about Trump's arrogance. Maybe look in the mirror when you're speaking on what the Democratic Party needs and what Democratic voters want.